This is my body box, and there will be some surprise for you. Uh, so, what an amazing atmosphere here. Uh, let me begin. Uh, today, our topic is uh, the replicating the creator's perfect design. Let me give two seconds for this. Uh, as a toolmaker. So, while we came up to this earth, either we created or come something else, I'm not really sure. But uh, I found this uh, nice picture on the web. Uh, you can see it from ancient times to the computer era that we have arrived so far. Uh, we developed some tools, 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 and they are in everywhere and they are around us. They are uh, making our time uh, very efficient for us. And with the help of them, we are able to create lots of things, new tools, and the other stuff. So the question is, how do we design them? So, from the ancient times, as you know, in, uh, before, Jesus, before Jesus, we designed something. But it came to our mind uh, how to design them. But the question is how? By replicating or inventing? As you know, we have lots of inventions. We invent computers, technology. It's developed in lots of areas. And we put bricks to the huge science wall, as you can imagine. So, the, in the other hand, we replicate some things, things that uh, we saw from environment. So, this is one example. You can see the wheels there and their sonar ability. We put them into the submarines to make us see the underwater objects, etc. This is another example. The Wright brothers, you know, invented the plane and its things uh, that helps us to fly. So, we saw the birds and we learned how to fly. It begins like this. And when we search deeper, we are able to see that we uh, get in the very smaller sizes, like this one. Uh, it's a bee fly. It's as big as a coin, as you can see in the picture. So what is next? The next thing, so we develop ourselves so far. And we has lots of information within us. It belongs to all these years that we are in, on Earth. So next thing is uh, come across to replicating our own bodies. Not in mechanical sense, don't laugh at it. <laughs> Not in bionicle sense, sorry. Is, it is in mechanical sense. So we have capability to replicate our body mechanically. So as you all know that there are lots of robots, robots things going on there. But I think replicating our body uh, is touching very ancient times. So check this picture. Uh, this is Augustus Caesar in ancient times, the first century AD. He's standing like this and stands forever like this. So there's no movement. So I cannot call this sculpture as a first replication of our body. So what is first replication of our body? I think it was originated at 3000 BC. Uh, I have one with me. It's not from 3000 BC, but it's from our days. It's actually the puppets. We use them with lots of things. We play games. Hi, buddy. Hi. It's something like this. It's replaced our uh, entertainment in those days. But we are not so much using them so far. So let me put my friend here. Sorry. Uh, the next thing, after uh, these kind of things had happened, you all uh, heard about Da Vinci. Da Vinci has created a circle that indicates the golden ratio of our body. So my arm, its dimension is there. My leg, its dimension is also there. So dimensions put it on the paper by Da, Vin da Vinci. So that uh, we, he opened up a next door for us to develop lots of more things. So this helped the biological area, mechanical area, and etc. So one more brick to science wall that we have in our history. So, the next thing was to the, put these uh, dimensions into the with, uh, connect these dimensions with the joints. So I have one wooden block with me for you. This one. This have joints, so you can see them, and we are able to make this body move in each direction and give lots of shapes. Uh, let me give something like this weird, but uh, we gave lots of shapes to it and. Uh, but to make this body move, we need to put external force on that. So this is not a perfect replication of our body, but it's a kind of, it's a model. So what we done next is such kind of things, Darwin. 
thanks to my lecture, uh, we have Darwin with us. Uh, this is a humanoid robot, and it needs to boot itself. Let me put it here. <coughs> it's booting, so it, we, will, we have to wait for him to come alive. Darwin has lots of abilities. Without your touch, he's, he's able to walk, talk, uh, and move around, dance, do su such kind of things. And uh, I think it's a, there's a software inside and help us to uh, represent our robotic laboratory in Özgün University. So what this body have is motors, so it's able to do such kind of things. There are some joints, and uh, there are some algorithms inside. With the help of these algorithms and software, Darwin is able to move, talk, and walk. So, what comes next is <laughs> this sculpture is from iMovie. While we are, thank you, while we are creating these things in real life, in the science fiction, we <laughs> create lots of imaginations what come to our minds. As you know, Transformers, the real steel, the robots fighting, and uh, iRobot, and lots of things. Check this one out. Uh, this is the sculpture. Close. See you. This is a sculpture. As it seems like me, not perfect. It seems, but it's almost same size as with my head, right? But it has no emotions with it. So we don't know how to communicate with them. Hi. Hi. So, no reply. So let us put this one here. So in the laboratory of UC, UCST Machine, Machine Perception Laboratory, they created a robot and called him Einstein. Einstein is able to give emotions to your actions. So check this video for a second. The first time Albert Einstein locks eyes with you, it can be an intense experience. The super-realistic Einstein robot, an emotionally intelligent machine modeled after the famed physicist, can track your eye movements, respond to audio cues, and mimic your facial expressions, much like a real human. The head and shoulders automaton was built at Hanson Robotics in Texas, and it uses 31 internal motors to evoke expressions of happiness, sadness, anger, fear, or confusion. Uh, isn't he cute? Some people are afraid of this, and some people love what they develop in the laboratories. So this is another technology we have so far. So we created the head somehow with some technology, but it comes to the body part. Uh, there are other technologies. This is again from our robotics laboratory. Uh, the actor is me, actually, with beard and special black costume. I have dots on me, and the cameras around me is recording my body movements. Let's see what we are doing. I'm standing like this. Okay. I'm turning around like this. And what I'm going to do next, let's see. So this, this movement. Okay. The cameras is all around me and tracking my movements and do some fancy stuff. Dancing like this and turning back around. I'm not going to turn in here. So I think it's jump, yes, I'm jumping, and it is recording. So we have these all software and algorithms within, my comp within our computers. So with the help of these technologies, we will combine them both and give these all specific informations to other robots. So imagine there's a heavy table there, and the robot behind stays like this, and I am here. So that robot is going to replicate my movements with the help of these cameras. So when I put my hands like this, and that robot's holding the table, so when I do this and hang the table, so robot can easily do that. But for example, it's too heavy, for example, 70 kilograms to, for me to, that I cannot uh, hold it easily. So that robot can do that. That's another technology. So let us look at the cutting edge. As you all know of the Honda and Asimo, uh, they I think, for per my personal belief, they are in the cutting edge because Asimo can walk, can jump, talk, and able to understand lots of people's speech and answer them one by one. And check this video for Asimo. <laughs> Jumping on one foot. In some conditions, when we are jumping on one foot, we are able to fall. It's too hard to stay like this. Some people really fall. Uh, I hope this carpet is okay for me. 
Uh, but Asimo can do this, and this is another uh, revolutionary thing in our uh, technology. So these are the bricks of our science world. So it came up to the point of replicating our body. As human species, we are uh, actually interesting species because we are almost at the age of replicating our own body. So the question is how we came up this far. As I have been mentioning that science world, yes, it is uh, helping us in every era, but I think our personal believings and missions that we put ourselves help us to build it so far beyond. So check this mission. The mission is to defeat the Human World Cup team by 2050 with, the, with these robots. So this is a new mission for us, and we will play football with robots. Sorry. Humans versus robots. Humans are ready, as you know. There are lots of Brazilians, uh, the other thing, other guys, the everyone in there in the football match team. But the robots uh, is about to come, and we will see what is going to happen at 2050. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs>